Dave, how you doing? Um, you know, nice, nice win the other day. I thought our crowd was really energetic early, early in the game, which I think is critical. I mean, you get six home games, they got to they got to be special and they got to mean something, and we got to have support anytime we play at home uh, because it's tough, tough at home, but it's tougher on the road. So I thought. You know, I thought a crowd got there early. I thought they were, like I said, enthused, energetic, and, and very helpful early in the game. And um, so I appreciate that our student body was just unbelievable once again, staying the whole time and, and bringing a whole lot of energy to the, to the game. And uh, it was a big, big difference against a really good West Virginia football team. So, you know, did what we had to do, got the win. Now we got a big game against Iowa State this week. Same kickoff time, 11 a.m. Need the same energy, same enthusiasm, same determination, same toughness, and same will. You know, we brought last week as a university, as a football program, as individuals on the team. Uh, so that's that's going to be our goal this week: is to be better than we were last week. <coughs> John Werner, Waco Trip. Art uh, Grant Campbell stepped in for Bryce Hager this year. How do you feel like he's done, and kind of what he's added there? I think he's done a good job. You know, Bryce was a tremendous player for us, you know, three, four-year starter, you know, 53-man roster with St. Louis right now. So, it's a great, great player. Uh, Grant's, you know, uh, you know, playing trees, not quite as deep as what uh, Bryce's was. But, you know, he came in against Oklahoma last year, did a good job. Bryce was out a little bit and uh, he has done really a nice job this year. You know, I think he's been a good leader, makes all the calls, you know, defensively a lot of them. And, uh, gets guys in the right spot, makes the right plays, and and just really uh, done a real steady job. So I I think he's uh, exactly what uh, Coach Bennett, Coach Goose are looking for on that side of the ball at that position. Bryce Terry, Waco Trib. Art uh, on Shock's touchdown run the other day. It looked like KD really had a nice block to kind of help get him in the end zone. Just how important for your running game is those receivers blocking on the edge? You know, it, it's honestly something we don't emphasize much, you know, in our scheme, the way we do things offensively. Now, Saturday we're a little bit different, uh, you know, because of the style of play that we knew West Virginia would bring to the game as far as pressing our guys a bunch, you know, to where on running plays we could actually engage um, and then, you know, receiving plays we could release. Uh, but, you know, we had, we had really a bunch of guys stepped up, Tootie, Jay Lee, KD, all were very physical blocking another day. and. And made a huge difference, you know, because anytime you got to play a defense, got 11 sets eyes on the ball, like uh, West Virginia does, probably 85, 90 percent of the time, uh, you, you got to control those guys. And um, you know, so they they were really instrumental in the game the other day. And that's truly really the first time, you know, that we've, you know, requested or allowed them to to be able to be that aggressive on the perimeter. Jerry Hill, Baylor Bear Insider. Are you had talked about? I don't know if you were nervous, but you didn't want Seth running too much. Is he is he pretty smart though in terms of getting down when he needs to? Is he is he getting better at that part of it? I guess. Yeah, I don't I mean uh, nervous. I'm not sure would be the you know correct uh, way to describe uh, you know my feelings. Um, I think uh, you know we just try to be intelligent with him. You know, I mean, we realize it's a position if if you want to see. You know, grandmama, while she's knitting, get up and scream, you know, rub his face in the dirt. It's usually when they're tackling the QB, you know. So we understand that at that position. You know, that's where guys really kind of, you know, settle it out. Uh, but he, you know, I thought he did a great job ball protection and being intelligent when he was running. You know, and you can, you know, as long as you can see things, you can avoid a lot of hits. Now, he got hit a couple times blindside, and those are the ones that concern you. But... You know he's he's a good enough athlete that uh, you know if he's out in space and to see somebody he can he can protect his body, and I think he did I think he did a really good job of doing that the other day. Sean Giggy, News 10 Sports, uh, Coach. Obviously, you've got a lot of good players doing a lot of good things this year. But after the game Saturday, Coach Holgerson said that you can put him down on record. Corey Coleman's the best player in America right now. I mean, do you agree with that? And do you think uh, that uh, he is? Warranted of you know bringing the Heisman potentially back to Baylor. I mean, you know, let's talk after 12 games. But uh, I certainly think the way he's, you know, come out of the gates that he's, you know, we've known he's a special player. I mean, it's not 
it's not earth shattering news to us. You know, we we've, we've been around him, you know, four years, so we we know what he brings to the table. And you know, I've been saying it for you know two years at least. You know, it's his passion, it's his energy, it's his toughness, and it's his skill level that allows him to separate himself from other people. Uh, so, I mean, you can have a a lot of passion, you can have a lot of toughness, you can have a lot of energy, you can have a lot of spirit, but if you don't have talent, then you're still going to be normal. You know, he's got all that with talent. And that's what allows him to separate and be different. So, yeah, he's, he's, he's very, very good. Coach John Morris, Baylor Radio. Follow up on that. In what ways is he better? How has he improved his game this season? Uh, you know, handling his emotions better, uh, understanding defenses better. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a maturing process all the way through. You know, I'm in, I'm in a position, fortunately, where I get to see, you know, children become men. And um, so that's, you know, that's a blessing for me and for us as coaches that we get to, to ride that, you know, that path with these kids as they become men, time they leave when they're 22, 23 years old, some of them 21. Uh, but I, I would think just, you know, just through the process of, of uh, responsibility, accountability, and maturability is, is kind of what's made him different this year as opposed to last year. And he was really good last year, 1,000 yard receiver last year. Uh, Coach uh, Sean George of Dallas Morning News, um, you guys gave up, you know, over 400 yards against West Virginia, but still put together a per se complete defensive performance. How do you guys judge your defensive performance? I guess at this point, you know, because it's so difficult with the way that you guys run so many plays and uh, give up so much of the clock. Uh, you know, we we really haven't run that many plays this year. You know, not like we'd like to. I mean, I think we were at 84 the other day. We'd like to be you know, 90 to 94 every game, you know. But it's not about the number of plays, it's about the number of points, you know. So we're trying to score when we get the football, and um, that makes it easier on the other side of the ball defensively because it puts other teams in predictable situations. And so that's the way we like to operate. You know, you get a 21, 20, 28 point lead, then all of a sudden, you know, if they want to run it three yards at a time, then, then we're okay with that. You know, that, that's, that's okay with us. Uh, so it makes the other team a little more predictable. But, uh, you know, judging our defense in this league, it's about three and outs and getting off the field and letting the, the offensive side of the ball have possessions. I mean, that's, that's what it's about. Points allowed, three and outs. And for any defense in the Big 12. Coach in the back, John Elizondo, News Channel 25 Sports. Uh, Iowa State, they hung tough with TCU last week uh, through the first half, and then they kind of pulled away a little bit later. Um, what do you expect to see from the Cyclones this weekend? They're good. I mean, they're just – they're a good football team. You can ask Toledo. I mean, double overtime at Toledo. I think they're number 23 team in America. And, you know, TCU, number two, three team in America. You know, 21 – I don't know what it was, 21, 21 at half, 24, 21 TCU maybe. Um, you know, they, they got about seven or eight guys back on offense. You know, Sam Richardson has been their QB for the last three years. Done a really good job. They got that kid Warren that's a freshman that's – redshirt freshman that's, you know, kind of lighting it up. A couple of really good receivers. You know, big tall guys, number five. I mean, so they got some impressive people. Mangino, Mangino does a great job with them, you know, from an offensive standpoint schematically of, um, you know, working for yardage. And, you know, we just got to get them out of their comfort zone. Defensively, Wally's, you know, been around as long as anybody done a great job. They've, they've changed up a little bit this year out of their traditional four, you know, four, two, five look into a three-man front. So that's, that's a little bit different. But, I mean, they're, you know, they're a Big 12 team. You know, they're a Big 12 team that, you know, over the last decade has, you know, probably been to four or five bowl games. So uh, we have a lot of respect for them, and, and we know we're going to have to be at our best to, to be able to get a win Saturday. <coughs> Uh, Steve Cook, Sikkim Sports. Coach, uh, West Virginia got called for a couple of chop blocks last week. Uh, had a kind of a scary play with Andrew. <clears throat> what do you think the future is in terms of enforcement on the chop block? Do you think it will be called tighter? Any other thoughts on it? Uh, you know, it's, it's just one of those things that um, can happen during the, the course of a game. You know, I, I, I mean, you can go to 10 football games and, and watch them collegiately and you might see two chop blocks. You know, it's, it's not a common penalty. It's not something that happens all the time and that's because most time the, the linemen are on the same levels. Either they're all down or they're all up. 
you know, chop block occurs, occurs when one's at a different level. Uh, so that's, um, it's, it's pretty unusual, you know, penalty. Um, but, I, you know, I don't see any changes coming. I mean, I, I bet if you check the stats on it over the last five years, you know, in the Big 12, over all the games, I would guess there'd be eight chop blocks called in 2010. It's probably the same in 2015. And that's, that's a wild guess. But it's just not something that happens very often. Nick Canizales, KCN Sports. Coach Shock Linwood is uh, at the top or near the top of every career rushing record, currently number two right now. How has he steadily improved since his freshman season? He made a big impact coming in as a freshman and now as a junior just uh, really taking it up in, uh, a notch. You know, I, th I think keeping his, his passion and his hunger, you know, more than anything. Uh, you know, a lot of times when guys get a little success, or not a lot of times, but sometimes uh, they can – you know, start believing what they're hearing, what they're reading, and, and a lot of times they'll lose their their drive and desire uh, and their their hunger that got them to where, what made them make make people talk about them. So I think he's done a good job of you know blocking out everything and just trying to be a passionate, inspirational football player because that's what he is. I mean, he's an energizer. You know, he's a guy that can inspire because he plays at an extremely high rate of passion and energy every time he steps on the field. And he does a lot of things uh, kind of behind the scenes that, that probably a lot of people don't notice as far as pass protection, helping our QB with calls at the line of scrimmage. Uh, so he, he's a really sharp guy, and he's, he's done a great job for us, fortunate to have him. Uh, Coach, with you guys coming up this week, and this will be the – Iowa State will be facing – the, the top three offense, offenses in America in three straight weeks. Do you think that better prepares them for you since they've faced number two and number three uh, offense already? And is that a gauntlet that, that you would want to go through? Um, you know, it's, it's just kind of the way it is when you get into conference play. I mean, you, you, know, you can bob and weave, but you're going to get hit, you know, eventually. Uh, so, I mean, you know what it is in August, and it's not going to change in October. I mean, so it's 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 a grind. It's a haul. You got to be tough. You got to be intense, and you got to be ready every time you step on the practice field. That prepares you for the game field. And so it's, you know, it's it's just it is what it is. And uh, if you if you survive this league, that's why only two universities have won it consecutively since its inception. I guess in 1996, that's Oklahoma and Baylor have done it back to back. Um, it's tough to do. It's hard to do because there's good people, there's good teams, and there's good traditions all across the board. Or you talked about the other day about that extra time that Kendall spent with Seth. Can you talk about just the relationship those guys have built and maybe how critical that is for a young quarterback? Oh, it's very critical. You know, and, and I, that's what I was saying prior to the season. You know, our whole deal with Seth is just, you know, figuring, figuring him out a little bit, you know, because you don't know somebody until you live with somebody until you go through experiences with somebody. So, you know, we've had six games, um, you know, and we're, we're getting a good feel of, you know, what how he operates internally. You know, because externally, you know, you, that, and we can figure that out. But internally is what controls what happens on the outside. So, uh, like I said, the more that, that we've been around him, the more Kendall's worked with him, um, the more impressed we've become, because, mainly because of, of what motivates him and that's helping everybody on our football team. I mean, it, it's us and it's not me with him all the way. Coach, uh, mathematical mid midpoint of the season, six games in, six to go in the regular season. Anything that you do here at the midpoint or is, does that even register with you? Yeah, it, it honestly does, John. You know, we we're coming off five week stretch, you know, playing five games uh, consecutively, you know, three 11 a.m. kickoffs. So it, it's kind of a bam, bam, bam deal. So we're, you know, we're gonna, you know, alter a little bit this week and just try to try to really stay tight and focused mentally, you know, and, and then follow it physically, you know, for about the next five days. And then, you know, if we can take care of business, 11 a.m. at McLean Stadium Saturday morning, 3 p.m., you know, then we'll we'll low down just a little bit, you know, and you got you got to settle before you can rise. So we'll we'll try to settle. You know, during that off week, as we prepare for the next game, but you know, this this week right here is um, you know, it's a get tough week. You know, it's stay tough week, and and we're going to push all we got onto the table, 
and then let it ride Saturday because to us there is no time after 3 p.m. Saturday. Uh, yeah, you said earlier today that Andrew Billings is day to day. Uh, would you probably put Bonds in there if he can't go? Uh, you know, we got two or three options. You know, uh, KJ's played in there a little bit. You know, Bonds has been in there. So, um, you know, we'll just kind of see how, how he progresses through the week and then determine from there. But, um, you know, those guys are, I mean, they're, they're mouthpieces in. They're, they're ready to go. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it.